Greetings programs, welcome back to the game grid, you're back with Gaming Magic Markets, Baldur's Gate 3 and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a particular build that I've used for Shadow Hearts but you could use it for your main character, you could use it for hirelings uh, or really anyone else in the party where you want them to be super resilient, you want them to survive uh, and always to sort of uh, reboot your party, get it back up and running again with AoE heals, with uh, directed heals, lots of healing options, uh, lots of armor, mitigating damage so that they can stay alive for as long as possible, and also to weigh in with damage themselves, with occasional spells, but also being able to fill out your party roster and equalize using Animate Dead, uh, using Spiritual Weapon, some very awesome uh, abilities there, uh, you know, in order to keep your uh, party in the fight. Reminds me very much of World of Warcraft, uh, Holy Priest, uh, the ability to heal yourself as well as others at the same time. So this is one of the best things I think about uh, the life domain. For a start, very uh, centered around healing and to the point where one of your main features is this Disciple of Life. Uh, when casting a healing spell, the target regains additional hit points equal to two plus uh, the spell's level. So even if you use uh, things like healing potions, even if you potentially uh, use healing spells and healing items, you're going to add additional healing on top of that. There are also um, special skills and items that you can use, uh, which will actually give you life back as well. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But it's an awesome build. And actually, like I say, Shadow Heart for me with this particular build has been super resilient. She's actually been the MVP. VP of my party most of the time stays in touch uh, manages to uh, keep you know things going and uh, is is absolutely wonderful let's start with obviously the life domain there uh, that gives you cure wounds and bless sort of superior versions of that we're going to take a look at cantrips and i think you can't really get away from you know some uh, cantrips like for example guidance one of the most important ones uh, i think there's you know honorable mention for the likes of resistance for example um and also blade ward but at this point uh Th thaumaturgy would be a, a good one i do like having the option of having sacred flame um, because that gives you a ranged uh, attack but you could go produce flame that would be another one and i think that's a, a nice one to pick but guidance almost essential um shadow heart obviously also gets firebolt so that might affect your um uh, ch choice of cantrips at the start uh, abilities um, now this is by no means uh, optimized but I do find that this uh, set of ability uh, scores at the start does work for me so strength 10 um, dex 14 gives you a little bit of ability to perhaps use or consider using um, ranged uh, weapons such as uh, dual hand crossbows now you might think well hang on you don't get that as a uh, as a weapon proficiency that's true it doesn't mean that you can't use them in a pinch and of course you could use firebolt and other um, uh, spells in order to cause damage at range but maybe you want to have other options as well and so you know maybe hand crossbows or other types of weapons that work at range so your dexterity probably help with that also helps with um, saving throws um, and also will help you in uh, with uh, attacks that maybe where you have to roll a dexterity check um, so that you can take less damage. The objective of this build is to mitigate damage as much as possible. High uh, constitution as well. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of spells that are going to be concentration based. That's going to help with that and also improves your uh, hit point maximum. So I think that's a, a really valuable one. Again, we want to make a cleric that's going to stick around. The life cleric uh, that we're building here, we want to take pay pick items that are going to uh, mitigate damage or add, you know add additional um, hit points to uh, the mix but con constitution at quite high is, is, is going to be very very useful intelligence we can uh, get down to eight if you do happen to want to multi-class later on uh, potentially into other classes that like a wizard for example uh, you know remember the one wizard uh, level di dip in order to uh, do the uh, spells from scrolls learn spells from scrolls um, you know you may want to uh, still potentially uh, leave in intelligence at eight uh, to start with because there is and are items in the game that can actually increase your intelligence and so you you won't be at a disadvantage for very long wisdom of 16 i think you know the fact that we can pat pick particularly pick um skills and items or uh, you know uh 
feats as well that can also improve our wisdom um, means that 16 is an okay starting point for that and charisma of 10 so that we don't necessarily have a problem with being the face of the party if that's what you want i haven't uh, used shadow heart as the face of the party so 10 works for me you may want to hire charisma potentially if that's your goal uh, especially if it's your main character for example so we're going to go with that other things to say is skill proficiencies you may want to go with acolyte for example a good starting uh uh, one for cleric, uh, things like history, religion, insight, medicine, uh, a lot of them sort of uh, benefit from a high wisdom. And so you may want to consider those. But of course, you know, you can, uh, you know, you choose other ones as well. So we're going to go with that for our starting um, level. Let's go to level two. And at level two, we get, um, uh, you know, more hit points, of course. We get another spell slot. We get our channel div divinity charges. We'll talk about that. And the first thing that we get with that respect, in that respect, is turn undead. But much more important is this uh, preserved life, which is a healing energy that restores only your allies, which is amazing, uh, and only within, say, a nine meter range. But it's still an AoE heal. Uh, and that's, you know, a, a, a very beneficial, um, you know, additional uh, skill that we get or spell that we get. It's, it's like a class action. And so we use our channel divinity um, uh, charges for that. OK, um, so that is by far, I think, one of the best things for Life Cleric, because, you know, in a pinch, you have your spells, but you also have that preserved life as an AOE heal to help uh, members of your party uh, within a certain range. And that can actually potentially, uh, you know, raise more than one um, of your co uh, companions uh, in your party who are downed in a downed condition. You can raise, th raise them both at the same time, or if there's all three, uh, you could potentially raise all three amazing uh, as long as they're all you know within a certain distance from each other from a prepared spells perspective let's go and we just take a look now I I, I personally think sanctuary for example um, guiding bolt these are these are great spells to go with um, you know you could use for example shield of faith if you want to have more resilience in the early levels uh, that all sort of bolsters, bolsters your AC it is on concentration so you just have to watch out for other concentration um, based spells spells uh, like protection from evil and good uh, or um, you know other uh, spells that r demand concentration as we go deeper into the level so you just want to watch out for that um, I would potentially pick that one as well and let's not sleep on sanctuary fantastic spell and of course it goes without saying but I'll say it anyway just in case you're new uh, to the to the game healing word is one of the best spells in the game despite it being level one have it on as many characters as you possibly can and especially a life cleric so we're going to go to level three all right let's take a look now we get level two spells uh, we get a couple more spell slots as well and you'll see that some of the life domain spells that you get uh, automatically which is sort of superior uh, to what you could pick um, aid is great uh, because they increase their hit points maximum by five hit points on your allies so you kind of healing them but also raising their hit point maximum so it gives them an additional sort of buffer of hit points uh, and then lesser restoration you will find that this is actually more useful than you think um, some uh, monsters for example hit you with disease or paralysis or blindness uh, you know and 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 that can be uh, helped uh, with that for example undead I'm gonna do some stuff with you uh, with that uh, so watch out for those um, spiritual weapon amazing spell and I'm letting it stay locked in there uh, it was picked automatically for me. There's some great level two spells. A lot of them start to re require concentration. Spiritual weapon does not. Amazing. So you can uh, create your own um, weapon ally, a floating spectral weapon that attacks your enemies alongside you as a bonus action. So you can still do something meaningful in addition to that. You get a lot of concentration based spells. And so not having to concentrate on that is amazing. Uh, you do get, for example, silence. Um, which is another concentration spell um, and then uh, you get some other great spells like uh, hold person which scales as you uh, get more powerful you get uh, more spell slots at higher levels you can affect more than one person with hold person so that's great I think warding bond is particularly good uh, ward and ally and again not concentration based so you can kind of do that they gain resistance to all damage and a plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws great spell and so I would be thinking about maybe swapping out some of these spells in uh, preparing you know maybe uh, some of the more offensive spells might get rid of that maybe even guiding bolt although I do like to keep guiding bolt it's such a great uh, you know ranged uh, 
a damage spell for you to use so maybe i'll swap in for example at this point warding bond early levels you're still in act one and 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 you're, you're fighting a lot of goblins and, and and enemies like that so you're probably not going to require the likes of silence too much um you know blindness uh for example hold person could be good but i think warding bond is always going to be great so you, you you're emphasizing your party role of being a healer buffer and um you know controller and also aiding the party with additional uh bodies if you like as a spiritual weapon let's go to level four level four we get our feet and what i recommend at this point is and we could actually pick another cantrip and uh, you know whichever one you didn't pick of those that i mentioned which are really good uh you might want to choose blade ward uh, or th Thaumaturgy, which uh, actually helps with um, intimidation and performance checks. So you can actually help party members uh, when they're, you know, maybe uh, in a situation where they need to uh, intimidate or, or whatever. That can be added to the uh, the bonus uh, as, a, as a check. Um, so it can just be used at will um, without having to worry about that. So that's a really good one. It's better than you think. Um, as far as the feat goes, I would probably be picking, again, we want to create a very, um, you know, uh, resilient character so because we're already heavily armored we can use heavy armor and shield as a life cleric something I didn't mention earlier but something worth mentioning here a uh, heavy armor master might be something that we want to think about we actually get a, a, a slight increase to strength doesn't matter too much but look at this in incoming damage from non magical attacks also decrease by three while you're wearing heavy armor so the idea is that later on you're going to be using a uh, heavy, heavy armor now you could take this feat later on at level eight for example and that would be fine uh, but maybe that's delaying it a little bit because by by certainly i think level four or five you will have access to heavy armor uh, uh, most likely and so uh, you know maybe you, you don't want to wait on that one uh, the other thing that I would think of taking would be Warcaster um, and, and Warcaster is great because you will have many spells we saw them already didn't we uh, which are concentration based and so that's great gives you an advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration you know to be fair there's an argument to say well the shocking grasp uh, ability is not that important and maybe we should be going with ability improvement and we're putting more points into uh, wisdom two more points into wisdom maybe that will help because that does help our saving throws and other wisdom checks and things like that so it's really up to you how you progress with that um but um, yeah I, I would I would certainly think wisdom would be a good one to buff. Of course, we might get items, etc., that will help our wisdom later as well. So you want to think about that. Uh, I'm just going to go with uh, the two points into wisdom and let's move on. At cleric level five, uh, we get our uh, destroy undead. So we're actually doing, and not only turning undead, but we're actually uh, doing da damage to them as well. Very, very nice a buff to our undead turning ability um, and here we go we get beacon of hope and revivify so very early on at level five we're getting revivify which means that you know your heal bot uh, shadow heart here um, you know can actually revivify even if you've run out of scrolls uh, which actually you know in act two and act three you might find it a little bit harder to find um revivify scrolls unless you really hang on to them so having her being able to revivify a, a companion who has died uh, properly um actually very very useful but um you know i'm gonna have to say at this point uh when we prepare the spells um i'm going to uh take away speak with dead because maybe i don't need it Im immediately and re remove curse i'm gonna go with animate dead because having an extra body in the party very very useful in addition to spiritual weapon uh, so you're buffing the party in that way by adding more bodies um, and then spirit guardians i don't think we can pick a better spell at this level i'm tempted by mass healing word but i don't think you need it at this point and i think spirit guardians trust me is just incredible spell and you know in your role as a heal bot you'll be running around um, you know trying to heal and help your party members if you're able to do additional damage just by having that radiating um, you know uh, sort of three meter zone of damage uh, caused by spirit guardians on your enemies uh, it's fantastic
So uh, Spirit Guard is very important. And again, that's a concentration-based spell. So it's really valuable to maybe take the likes of Warcaster uh, as a feat or have um, a higher, you know, having high concentration and other um, ways of, of helping your concentration uh, checks. Very, very useful. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go to the next level, go to level 6. At level 6, we get a new subclass feature. And that's Blessed Healers. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Now, in addition to this, I do have an item, which is a helm. You may come across it. I'll show you it in just a short while. And that, that helm actually gives you, in fact, it's this one here, Crowning Glory. Uh, if you can find this helm, uh, this helm also heals you when you heal someone else to the tune of one to six hit points. If you have that helm, plus you also have Blessed Healer, uh, which you get when you get to level six as a life cleric, you're going to be uh, gaining spells, uh, sorry, gaining healing, uh, gaining hit points. When you cast a healing spell of level one or higher on another creature, you gain, regain hit points equal to two plus the spell's level. So you might regain four or five hit points from that, maybe more. Uh, and also then, uh, if you can find Crowning Glory, you're going to be regaining even more. Now, it's a, literally come to the point where if uh, Shadow Heart is actually taking damage in my uh, playthrough, she's healing others, and in so doing, she's gaining back something like 10 to 15 hit points herself just by doing a healing word or something like that. An amazing thing is, is actually even when you go and do a, a helping hand on someone else where you're literally just giving your party member one hit point just so they can get up from the downed position you're regaining he uh, health points as well you know hit points as well amazing stuff let's take a look at uh, spells and of course you know at this point again uh, you know I'd be thinking about well you know what do I need uh, instead of uh, you know for that final spell slot there um, maybe mass healing word would play really well with that but silence could be very useful coming up against enemy spellcaster that by this point let's hit accept on that go to level, level seven um, and uh, right now we're going into level four spells okay so just taking a note that death ward and guardian of faith uh, at level four spells you're getting that slightly better version of those and so we get those automatically prepared um, let's take away banishment and just i'm going to put in freedom of movement that spell is fantastic stunned paralyzed restrained difficult terrain you can help your character your party members to uh, not be affected by those uh, conditions very very valuable many many uh, enemies are going to have those uh, abilities will be leaning on those abilities to slow you down cause you problems and so forth at level eight we get on our, our next feat and of course you know at this point i might be thinking about uh you know warcaster uh or perhaps uh getting my wisdom up to 20 at this point something like that um possibly uh you know it, it really is entirely up to you i i think you know warcaster is very useful but then maybe wisdom up at 20 is probably the best bet again and so you know your mileage may vary use whichever one works the best for you from a spell preparation point of view yeah it can't hurt to take banishment at this point um but uh, you know that this is the 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 point that i wanted to make earlier you know with that wizard one level dip you can actually start to, you know, potentially learn offensive spells from the wizard's uh, spell list, um, you know, from spell scrolls. Uh, and, and that gives you additional ability to maybe do things like fireball, haste and, and other really, really useful spells. So you may want to consider that. But if you're not up for multi-class and you just want to go forward and of course you know banishment or you know at this point i would think maybe strongly silence for example would be ideal uh, or even feign death you know a fantastic spell uh, which actually goes under the radar a little bit okay so let's just uh, stop at level nine um, because after that uh, level 10 and so forth um, you may want to multi-class after level 9, but at level 9 we still get some cool stuff like uh, Mass Cure Wounds, again an AoE uh, heal uh, to the tune of 18 meters that heals you and nearby allies. So it's only uh, healing everybody and raising everyone up from their down condition. We also get Greater Restoration, absolutely fantastic. And I think, you know, looking at the prepared spells option, we get Flame Strike and we get Insect Plague. And at that, you know, an Awe Contagion, uh, we can even, uh, you know, potentially use Planar Binding. But I think, you know, 
personally, Flame Strike, let Insect Plague, and the fact that we're getting some more healing, um, you know, class spells, fantastic. And so level nine, I think, is important. After level nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, well, you might miss out then on level six spells. Um, I don't know that that's so important. You know, at level 11, you're going to miss out on level six spells. Um, you may want to consider multi-classing into uh, one or two other classes like the wizard for example maybe uh you know other uh, classes that give you even more resilience to benefit you maybe more than the level uh, 11 um spells uh the level six spells at, at level 11 and so really entirely up to you but there we go i think you know fr from my point of view actually when we go accept on this let's just take a little look at um you know uh shadow hearts uh um <laughs> Shadow Heart, let's take a look at her here. There we go. Uh, so remember that um, the idea is if you can find uh, this Crown and Glory ability, which is on Wapira's Crown, maybe other similar items. I haven't found them myself. That would be amazing. I've also got Vivacious Cloak. You gain seven temporary hit points after casting a spell while in melee. Great as well. Uh, anything heavy armor that's rare, that has additional abilities. You can see this one has uh, all incoming damage reduced by two. Brilliant. And of course, uh, you get that from a particular point. You, you, you're fighting someone in Act 2. I'm not going to give it away, but uh, you're going to have that. And also the shield. The shield also uh, gives you some benefits to your spell saves and gives you spell uh, shield bash and so forth. So a great shield to have. Uh, I've also got the Blood of Lathander, which is a legendary... Um, uh, was a legendary mace and um, that's also fantastic of course because uh, as you see there when your hit points are reduced to zero you get regain two to twelve hit points allies within nine meters also regain one to six hit points now there's a uh, sort of an area in the game which you have to find and you have to uh, and you know work your way through a bunch of puzzles um, and I, again no spoilers but that's where you can find that and so there's many um, you know items that are going to really improve uh your uh life cleric your heal bot as it were and uh there we go i think that's that's enough of that i hope that's helped you uh, personally i think this is you know <laughs> she's so capable and so um you know uh you know capable of, of sustaining the party and sticking around and bringing everyone back to life um and and just reigniting everyone's hit points i've literally had three down party members just her remaining and then um you know he aoe healed a couple with a couple of the abilities or, or, or spells and suddenly everyone's up to 30 40 hit points again uh, and and it's incredible it's literally like you know almost like you loaded up a, a saved game uh <laughs> with a it's it's, it's amazing and of course if anyone gets any crippling conditions she can remove them as well if anyone does actually die she can revivify as well um absolutely wonderful and then she's adding more party members uh, you know into the mix and with spirit guardians um that's a spell level three honestly she just run around the battlefield doing her little things of of trying to get everyone uh back to normal uh, and and she's doing damage to the enemies as well uh, and uh, there's a particular uh, boss fight in act two that she was a hundred percent my mvp there just from spirit guardians and all the healing she was able to do at range from those behind her uh, absolutely amazing so we'll leave it at that i hope that was useful thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again uh, soon take care